glasses. Oh yeah, we're glad we have that now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you all love. <laughs> um, but yeah, my uh, the orange kitty needs to banak bonbon needs to go to the vet, veterinary vision clinic uh, uh-huh. tomorrow morning at like eight thirty in the morning uh, oh. because uh, well he's almost blind, uh, but he's been like that since birth. Um, but recently he's been, his eyes have been getting cloudier and there's been slight discharge out of one of them. So we have to take him to see what's going on. Um, so like not to particularly correct his vision, but to make sure that like nothing bad is happening. It doesn't get, it doesn't get worse. Well, yeah. Well, or just that it's not like discomforting him honestly, yeah. like, because like cat going blind isn't actually that huge of a deal. It's like, even with his low vision, like unless you're playing with like a tiny string or something, you'd never know that he had vision issues. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, cats use their smell and their hearing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like maybe once a week you'll like run into something and that's the only time the entire week you'll like realize it. I mean, cats are always doing that anyway. Yep, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're chasing bargains. So, <laughs> the bargains is... Right. We decided to stop playing hashtag feminism. We're going to play cat. And <laughs> we're all going to... No. I have my set. I have my set. That no. is one of those games that I'm always ready to like... <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on. Let me get on my cat ears. I have them ready. <laughs> um, so uh, we are we are playing... Hashtag feminism nano games um, because a new anthology, well, the a re-release of the anthology is coming out from Pelgrim Press, and also because all these wonderful people, Laura and Alex and Akon, are all big bad con guests. They're coming out this year, yeah. so we're excited yeah. to hang out, play games together, uh, and we started a friend in need. Uh, we picked characters and talked about their background, and we're ready to to jump in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, why don't you and I get started? So, um, so they can enter. Yes. So I get that you want to judge a movie by its merits, but I think you should just see Wonder Woman in the theater to support well, Wonder Woman as a movie and not wait until it comes out because there's a value to just supporting it now. Well, but, but like, I, I don't know if it's good yet. And like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't say like I support something if I haven't seen it. And I feel like I haven't really read like an objective review yet. Like I'm hearing a lot of like, rah, rah, rah. Like I love it, but I like from people who expected to love it. You know what I mean? So I haven't really heard anything. Kind well, of, I expected oh to love it and I loved it. So I hear what you're saying. I don't know if you're going to, I don't know if you can find, an, I mean, everybody has opinions, but, but they're, they're, uh, they're right over there. Um, oh, Ella, come, come on, come on oh, over here. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Pat. Uh, hey, Claude. Hey, Ella. Um, gives hugs <laughs> out of chair. Hey, Ella. Hey. Uh, uh, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm really, okay? I'm sorry. I'm late. Uh, Oh no, we were just hanging out talking about how Charlie's gonna go see how Claude's gonna go see Wonder Woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh um Pat uh Claude, this is uh this is Charlie. Hi. Um, oh hey Charlie, nice Charlie. to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Char- Charlie helped me out uh a little bit, but something happened on the way over. Um Are you okay? Did you guys mug a guy? What happened? <sighs> No. Charlie, do you want to join us? We're we're we got room for four. Oh, yeah, come on. yeah let, let's sit down. Um, oh, okay, if it's all right. Time. Yeah, yeah, um, I've got time. Uh, look, it's um, some some guy came up to me as I was getting off the subway and started yelling at me a little bit, uh, and I, uh, I, I, I just don't even know what happened. I just. It's not the first time that it's happened to me, but I just completely, f- you, you know, when you like completely freeze up and you don't know what to say or like, you know what to say, but it just doesn't come out. Uh, <laughs> Cause guys are terrifying. What a jerk. It, he, that guy was really aggressive and you know, it's, it's really hard to face that sort of situation on your own. No one should have to face it on your own. Yeah. But the thing that really bothers me is just, I, I, I just didn't even know what to do do right when he when he came up to me he he actually seemed like a nice guy right and like i was meeting you all for lunch and that was 
really the the big reason why I just kind of like blew him off and was just kept walking, but he just kept following me. What, what did he say? Like, was he just trying to talk to you? Did you have your headphones in? Uh, I put my headphones in after he he tried to come up and he tried to say hi, and I said, I, I, I just kind of waved him off and said I had to be somewhere, and then. Which is the oh. universal. When you put the headphones in, he should know not to talk to you. Like that. Or maybe you think that, you know, maybe he thought like, oh, she didn't hear me. Well, but you shouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. I'm just trying to give, you know, some perspective. Sorry, go on, go on. I, 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 maybe I should have done something else. I, I don't know. I didn't really respond directly to what he was saying. I just kind of waved off and started walking and put my headphones on. And maybe that was... You should like have done whatever you did. Trial. You don't. You're not responsible to do any. Like it's not your job to do anything to appease random people. Well, and, except, except like you know, common politeness and courtesy and. Yeah, maybe maybe it was just because I was like kind of rude, and I just started walking that he got upset. Uh, no one deserves that. And you you don't have to be absolutely polite. So if he's a complete stranger, and he was counting on you being uh, caught off guard and not suspecting him. Well, I mean, let's not, like, I mean, I wasn't there. I don't want to say anything, but, like, we don't have to assume that he's, like, devious. Like, he obviously just recognized that you're really pretty, and, you know, maybe he was just asking you out. He, he was yelling at her when I showed up. Okay, I yeah, guess I, I put on my headphones and I started walking, right? And at first he was just like, hey, why won't you talk to me? Like, just come back. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to talk to you a little bit. But then I, I, he raised his voice and thankfully when he started doing that, Charlie was there. Oh, and thank you, Charlie. That's Charlie cool. came. But Claude, do you think that like I should have talked to him or like, did, did I do the wrong thing by just I mean, trying to walk away? I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I, like when people talk to me on the street, like you just, you nod or you like acknowledge, you know, or, or, you know, like, Ella, you're very like delicate and you're very like sweet and, you know, you smile at people. Like sometimes you just have to give people that like off face, you know, just like, you know, just give them that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Brush them off. Um, no, I don't think so, Claude. I think Ella can do whatever she wants and people should get the hint. If they like say hi and she doesn't respond, then they can like that's their problem like ellie you're not responsible to like appease people on the street i mean i'm not saying go pick fights but like you don't have to do anything but you don't yeah. have to i'm just saying if you don't want stuff like this to happen like you're, you're right to do it whoa there I, I don't thing. i don't think that was appropriate at all i mean i don't know you and you're ella's friends but honestly ella's not to blame in any of this she did what she needed to do, and that person was completely, like, unequivocally out of line. Look, Charlie, I, I'm really happy that, that you stepped in, right? And I'm really sorry that, like, I, I, I put you into that situation. But I don't know, maybe, like, Claude, maybe you have a point. Maybe, maybe this was all just me leading someone on i i don't know like maybe they maybe they thought i was i was interested or that i wanted to talk to them and then when i just start walking away maybe they thought i i was toying with them or blew them off or l i get that like oh. this feels i mean it seems like you feel really overwhelmed and i can't imagine why you wouldn't it's super it's a super overwhelming experience it's terrifying i mean charlie said they were the dude was yelling at you. That's super scary. Yeah, that, that um, part is definitely out of line. And I just I think it's I don't think it, what you did matters nearly as much as just how are you doing right now? Like whatever you did was fine. And just like I just don't want you to walk away from this feeling bad about it because it's not your fault. And it's that guy it was yeah. See, like Claude said, that guy was clearly out of line. Should not be yelling at you. Are you okay now? I mean, you don't have yeah. to be okay now. Like that's fine. But if you need some hugs or some time or a beer, like we're we're here for you. Yeah. How are you doing? 
I'm I'm doing better. It, I was really glad when when I saw Charlie there. I didn't know what you were doing immediately, Charlie, when you said that we were late to spin class, and I'm I'm sorry that you had to go. What? Is that is, was that your con? Is that how you like? <laughs> yeah, Char- Charlie just said that you know we were, we had to go to spin class and we were late, um, and it, it took me a few seconds to to realize what he was talking about. So this guy thought that like, oh, this is just some other random person who I'm going to go and like walk and talk with now. And they weren't good enough, but Charlie was good enough, I guess. I don't know. But he got really upset after that. Um, But Charlie shut him down pretty fast and then he backed away. I hate these guys are such losers. Like they don't, you shouldn't need to have to have an excuse to not talk. It's really weird. Like, I've never, like, why did he just get angry like that? I've never seen anything like that happen. Well, I have a resource I could share with you. Like, I, I've sometimes helped my other friends out. Um, it's called iHollerBack.org. So there's a lot of women experience street harassment. And you're not alone. This guy has probably harassed before. But then should I, like, I, I was in my gym clothes. Like, should I just not? like be walking around like that is that it does not matter what you're wearing you could be wearing nothing at all and no one has any right to harass you or impede you that's really amazing that you just like jumped in charlie i'm thank you so i mean i don't i can't thank you on l's behalf but just as a friend and a person who doesn't want to see this happen thank you so much for doing that yeah, that that was really solid. Thanks for thanks for sticking up for Ella. I really appreciate it, Charlie. That, that meant a lot. Um, fist bump. Fist bump. Four way fist bump. <laughs> well, I, I I'm I am feeling a a little better. Um, I guess I'm just disappointed that I just froze up like that, right? Um, does it just get better with, like, because it's happened before and I've been a lot better at, at dealing with it. Um, I, I don't think you can beat yourself up. Like, we all have times where it's, you know, you get caught off guard and it's really hard to know what to do. I mean, that's what people take advantage of is that you're distracted, you're not expecting it. You know, like, you, you have good days and bad days at everything. This doesn't mean you did anything wrong or that you're, like, you certainly didn't deserve it. Um, you don't don't beat yourself up. It's totally not your fault. Thanks, Pat. Uh, that means a lot. No, I'm. I don't know why, but I'm just not really feeling this restaurant anymore. Yeah, it's kind of loud, and I can see why you'd want to like chill out. Do you want to? Do you want to just go somewhere else? Yeah, Maybe, like someplace a little quicker. Okay. Yeah, Charlie, do you want to come with us? Oh, um. Sure. Okay. Let's, cool. Let's go somewhere else to have dinner. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Transition. Well, star wipe. <laughs> star wipe, star wipe, star wipe. <laughs> <Anyway. sighs> okay. We're not these characters anymore. We are not these characters. <laughs> we are now just us reflecting on the game. <laughs> hmm. Um, let's do our, uh, okay, everybody in the Twitch chat taking a deep breath as well. It's very good. You can try this at home. Yeah. (sighs) Play the home game. (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's do a little debrief. Let's reflect on the subject. Um, uh, this kind of victim blaming stuff is, first of all, does everyone know what victim blaming means? That's something that we've all heard before. Um, uh, and is this something that you hear from time to time? And if so, how do you react to it? I think it's, um, I, I've certainly heard it and I, uh, and I think it's, I, I feel like it's a, a normal reaction to try and like, to, to kind of do the, the cloud, like find the reasoning of it like figure out like well where was it in like in yourself it's like a really natural what did i do wrong when it's not as obvious as this when it's not somebody yelling it's like um was there something 
did I deserve that in some way? Um, and I don't know. I, I think that there's like a, a part of our brain that wants to either blame ourselves or find a reason for something and like understand the why. Maybe if I just knew, maybe this person had a bad day. Maybe this person, I look like somebody they know. Maybe something else set them off. And like all this justification and explanation, um, uh, which is crappy because a lot of it is just ex doing anything but you know addressing the yeah. actual behavior itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did find that in my own explanation of what happened, I had a very natural like inclination to make the abuser more sympathetic in some weird, terrible way, right? Like, yeah. uh, and maybe that's just because like living in that world where people are so blatantly terrible is kind of hard, right? And so you try to like describe a little bit more justification and rationality and like um like less malice to other people's actions um and so that's kind of what i naturally found coming out in myself uh, being the victim there's um i find like it's one thing when it's directed at other people but when you are like blaming yourself for something like that that's happened to you there's almost this element of like control mm -hmm. like it like it's it's this weird like Oh, I can stop it from happening again, or I can like stop it from happening to my friends if I figure out the thing that I did to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And like I will like mess you up long term, but in the moment it's just like, oh yes, this is an experience I can control. It didn't just happen to me for reasons that I can't have any influence over. Mm -hmm. I might have some influence, but really like this is the chaotic whirlwind of yeah. the world which is inflicting this. Yeah. It's it's something to fight against rather than something that like has a strict cause. So. Yeah. Matthias uh, said in chat, I feel victim blaming is often implied and subtle. Uh, that's the form I encounter the most and it's not so easy to comfort. Uh, I, th I think it is often really subtle. It's often little <laughs> microaggression questions that um, don't say that was your fault, but they ask questions around it was your fault. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, what were you wearing? Is yeah. you know, like the what neighborhood? Which way did you? Which way did you come? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah what did you say to them? Like, was there awesome. like were the lights out? Was it? Were there a bunch of guys there? <laughs> or, yeah. What were you gonna say, Lauren? Oh, uh, often there's like a lot of deflection around the actual core problem, where it's just, well, you know how else are like guys and girls going to meet each other? <laughs> That's right. I didn't go there. But I could have. <laughs> yeah. uh, straight harassment. Yeah. And the thing is, I think you can always find ways to normalize. I mean, you can normalize any behavior, but I think mm -hmm. that uh, it's, it's always, if you take enough steps, you can like justify any behavior and, Street harassment is one of those things where it often isn't very many steps. It's it is often like as simple as just like, well, what if he was just trying to like exactly that question? And that's yeah. so not the consensual environment that was <laughs> happening at all. But you can like just sidestep that and uh, yeah, fake Alex Blue says, "Had you been drinking?" Is another oh, terrible oh, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also in, in this one, it was like, um, if Laura, you didn't have like the, the like objective view of reality outside of the interaction to be like, no, he was yelling at you, right? Like that, oh. that was not like, yeah. it, it provided really important grounding to like, no, this is like some objective things that happened that let us say that this wasn't. Yeah. Right. Having a witness, having someone that is not you and if, and more importantly, oh, also not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> to say no 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 this guy was completely out of line trust me yeah well and it and it, it it begs the question of how valid your your experience and your mm -hmm. feelings and your testimony is right like if you say he was totally out of line or what he did made you feel uncomfortable people might judge that you know, people are going to evaluate that. They're going to judge that statement. But we saw that, like the moment when when Charlie said, you know, oh, he was yelling, and Cloud, you were immediately like, oh yeah, no, you're right. That's totally not. Cool. <laughs> Everything like, else is flattering. I don't know nice, what was happening. As soon as voices are raised. 
<laughs> and I, I mean, I don't think that's unrealistic at all. I think, you know, someone yeah. can say like, I don't like that person. They make me feel uncomfortable. And you're like, why, what, what do they do? And then it's like, well, they did this and this. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Somebody really need to justify why they feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And a lot of people who are apologi- uh, apologetic about this kind of stuff will have that like threshold. You know what I mean? Like, like, Hey, oh, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Oh, he said that. Oh, okay. Maybe that's not okay. Instead of like the whole thing being like, Hey, just don't yell at me on the street. Just leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. The last question is: In what ways might you help in situations of street harassment? Besides the excellent example in the game, um, I've, I've, uh, I don't, I don't know uh, that this is always um, uh, an opportunity. But one thing I've seen modeled, and I uh, aspire to do when I am cognizant and brave enough to do it is often guys will identify with other guys and want to make them complicit in that like this is this is okay what we're doing and um rather than say like i'm going to protect this person over here or rather than making it personal um what i what i have seen modeled before and i think is, is great is saying we don't do that as though there's an implied we of we as humans who respect each other <laughs> and don't treat each other like crap don't do that um, and it could be either we don't do that here, we don't do that at this gaming table, we don't do that at this convention, we don't do this. I mean, on the street, it's sort of worst case scenario because there is no kind of uh, agreement that anyone's made except for just that we're inhabiting the same space. <laughs> you know, we didn't we didn't agree to come to a restaurant or a club or a con or mm-hmm. anything. But um, as a guy, that's something that I, I try to be mindful of is just telling other guys like, no, I'm not complicit in what you're what you what you're doing i don't think it's okay yeah the one that i had always like been primed to be ready to do myself i guess is to like conspicuously be ready to go into proximity like to be nearby someone who might be getting harassed to like be a be a presence there but to to pretend to be someone's friend is not something that i had thought of or heard of before i guess so um i have a little bit of reading up to do on the I hollow back that org. <laughs> it's a classic. And it's I think that's one that's easier to do if you are the same gender as the person being harassed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's way, way easier. Um, but the nice thing about the pretending to be a friend is that you can do it from really far away. Like you can be like, hey, catch up. Hey, mm-hmm. whatever, say a random name and just like gesture towards them and like, hey, come join us, you know, as though you're like part of a group. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, so that's something you can do from far away. Like if you're at like a music festival or something or like a crowded place. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you can totally just swoop in and, um, like even striking up a conversation with someone like mm-hmm. as a stranger, you don't even need the pretense. You can just be like, we're talking now and we're in a conversation and we're not giving the harasser any energy whatsoever. Yeah. That's definitely one that I had, I had heard of before and like mm-hmm. was, was ready to do. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Um, and all the other approaches as well. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. In my past experience, a lot of it's been kind of being that extra person because uh, um, sometimes my friends wouldn't get harassed if I was there with them because then you have another person who's there kind of, it makes it a little bit more high pressure, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not so sure if I would be able to be... Um, to be like Charlie, though, to go up to a complete stranger. Part of me thinks that, oh, maybe I could, but I don't know. I'm pretty shy in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Charlie's pretty remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's cool. <laughs> I think uh, Matthias asked if um, if there's genders for any of the characters, and I said that Ella was, is the only character that's gendered in the game, and all the other people can be and i don't think we i think the only person we gendered in our game was we we defaulted that it, it seems that charlie was male but other than that i don't i don't know that cloud you or i we specifically assigned genders to ourselves i didn't feel like it was i didn't feel like it was like critical to do yeah i they can be people of any gender um i think i think i was playing claude as a dude because i think i was saying things that i've heard dudes say mm-hmm. but but like honestly, 
I could have said things that I've heard women say because like women do this kind of thing and they use that kind of rhetoric as well. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, to- I've totally heard that where it's like, here's how I avoid street harassment. People don't give me <laughs> shit for some incidental reason. <laughs> I attribute it because I that. walk on that side of the street. Yeah. <laughs> I just use my resting bitch face, and it's a magical <laughs> talisman. <laughs> it's a spell. <laughs> yeah. RBS level four. <laughs> Twenty foot radius. <laughs> then you attract the guys that tell you to smile. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It's actually just a magnet for like there are separate classes of harassment, and they. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I run a lot. I don't know why. I just run a lot, either because I'm running late or because I like getting places fast. <laughs> and I get a lot of like, run, Forrest, run. And, oh. and just oh. like, and just like, don't be late. And like, don't trip. And people like make like mock tripping gestures. Like they're going to trip me, but they're not really trying to. They're just like acting like they might. Oh my That's gosh. Not very it's good. Really, it, 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 like, I've done it all my life. And so it's just a, this accumulated thing. Like people just, um, yeah. And I mean, it is not anywhere near the level no. of, but it's it just people like want to have a reason to any, the flimsiest excuse at all. <laughs> Is Someone's going slightly faster than others. Yeah. <laughs> Bust it out. <laughs> yeah. People shouldn't do that fake tripping thing. One time yeah. my friend was holding some pizzas and he was like, it, well, t- like seriously, two boxes of pizza. And he was like, wouldn't it be fun- funny if I just slipped on this ice? Whoa. And then he fell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The pizzas were fine. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Did you find okay? <laughs> the story has to He's happen. Dead. <laughs> Okay. No, he's fine. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> Still love him. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I'm glad. Lovely discussion, everyone. Thank you for playing that game with me. And thank you to uh, Muriel Ag- Agarias for designing it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Do we feel ready to go on to the next game? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um... Next game is lipstick. I'll pull that up. There you go. So lipstick is another game that's a little higher on the intensity uh, spectrum. Um, it's a game that only has three players, so I'm gonna just be doing controls. Um, but you'll you'll still be able to hear me if anyone wants to talk to me. I can and I can read Twitch chat and what and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I don't know, Alex, why don't you? Okay. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, intro to this one. So this is Lipstick by Cassia Gangas. Um, this is a game about a televised debate between a feminist and an MRA. And the game takes place inside, uh, the head of that woman, uh, Sophia, as she imagines what the debate will be like if she does, and if she doesn't, wear lipstick. Um, as someone who made very deliberate choices about how much makeup I was going to wear to the stri- Twitch stream, uh, I really relate to this character in, in this moment. Um, so basically, one player is going to play Sophia with lipstick, and also the secondary character of Sophia's mother. The other person is going to play Sophia without, oh, sorry, Sophia without lipstick and her mother. And the other person will play Sophia with lipstick and her friend, Emma. So Laura is going to be Sophia with lipstick slash Emma. And Hakan is going to be Sophia sans lipstick slash Sophia's mother. Um, I will be playing uh, Henry, the men's rights activist, who she will be debating in her head. So I will... (laughs) Um, so I'll be playing uh, that MRA that lives inside all of our heads that we argue with from time to time. <laughs> we always win. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, so basically, the structure of this will be that um, uh, we'll open up. Um, I forget who starts. I totally, I swear to God, I dropped for this. Uh, when the game starts, Sophia imagines the TV host asks the question. Oh, it doesn't say. Oh, yeah. oh okay. So, oh, yeah. So, um, so we can start with whichever one you want, and then whenever the next person wants to tap in, 
um, they just raise their hand and go tap. Or you just make a little tap motion at your webcam. Tap, tap. Uh, but say it out loud too. Um, because while while Sophia, with or without makeup or lipstick, is debating Henry, the there will be a little secondary character in the corner. I don't know if that's up on the stream yet. It will no, be. I'll pull it up. This, we'll, we'll start with Sophia with lipstick. That may not be how we open, but. Sure. Um, so as you can see, there's like a little little character in the corner um, that will be either Sophia's mom in her head uh, or Sophia's friend Emma in her head. Um, so to introduce you to the characters, Sophia, oh, yes, okay. uh, While Sophia with or without lipstick is debating the men's right activist, does the tertiary character interject in that debate, like the mother or Emma or so, what's that? Yes. Yeah, yes, so they interject, but only to Sophia. So I, as Henry, will not act like I can hear mm -hmm. um, them. Um, they will just be another voice that's kind of in your head. Good question. Um, okay, yeah. So, so to introduce you to the characters, um, why don't we do that thing again where we all read out uh, a character? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll read Sophia. <clears throat> Um, so Sophia doesn't feel comfortable with or without makeup. She feels she has never learned to apply it properly, and it looks smudgy on her. But without makeup, she fears she won't be taken seriously as a woman. She won't be convincing or professional. She is confused about her identity as a woman and a professional, and she is not sure if lipstick is part of it or not. Henry is Sophia's imaginary opponent charismatic, killer in debate, does his best to belittle Sophia. If Sophia is not wearing lipstick, she's not making an effort. If Sophia is wearing lip lipstick, she looks like a whore. Sophia's mother, an old time feminist. She thinks makeup is society's way to oppress women. She will watch the show. Sophia respects her and has always seen her as a role model. Emma, Sophia's friend, makes the effort to look super feminine. Sophia feels Emma is better looking, more charismatic, and sexier than her. In their teens, Emma tried to teach Sophia how to apply lipstick. Emma will watch the show. Okay. All right. Uh, interestingly, the key words of this uh, game are makeup, make, which makes sense, television, men's rights activists, and mother-daughter relationships, which I thought particularly the latter, uh, how much this affects how much your parents affect your 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 worldviews is insidious is huge yeah so uh who would like to go first sophia with or without makeup i can go first all right yeah. without okay so yes yes so um to reiterate again hakan is playing sophia without uh lipstick and and uh sophia's mother and laura is playing sophia with lipstick and uh, Sophia's friend Emma. So right now, you can see up on the screen who's who. Because fanciness, that's OBS. That is so fancy. I love it. Is there any um, prompt for the debate for any questions or anything that we're going to do? or just There is. I'll that's... give you a prompt since I'm off screen. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can. If that's okay. Pop me head, please. All do. right. Yeah, yeah. So you're, this is your announcer. This is your <laughs> announcer in Sophia's head. Coming from you live from inside uh, Sophia's head. Yeah. <laughs> When the game starts, Sophia imagines that the TV host has just asked the question, what's the difference between feminism and striving for gender equality? I can answer this one. So I can understand identifying as an equalist, right? If you recognize that there are differences in how men and women are treated in our society and you want that to stop, right? So for example, uh, fathers being less likely to get uh, custody of their children, um, you know, that's, that's a gender equality issue. Um, uh, I don't know, I suppose in the past, if you looked at something like women's suffrage, then that could have been an equality issue, but that's completely different than the, basically the current form, toxic form of feminism, which is really about taking rights away from men and putting women in places that they don't belong. But there's still tons of places where, it, you know, all the insidious inequalities like you're talking about still exist all the time, right? Like if you talk about different levels for pay, different expectations, different opportunities for advancement. Yeah, we all know and, that the like, wage gap is a myth, but okay, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. Keep all going. these things, they've been scientifically proven, they all still happen, right? Uh, like top companies have very, very few women on their executive boards, right? This is 
if you look but at the Senate, how many female the senators? The fact that like, women are better suited to other things, right? So you're assuming that women should be CEOs, when if that's what they were suited to do, then that's what they would be doing. But you're assuming that they I mean, have the same. How many how many male secretaries are there? How many male uh, knitters are there? How many male nurses are there? Not many. But the, that isn't because they haven't they have been systematically denied opportunity to be able to do so. It's it's something that we need to be able to address in our society and give everyone you know the opportunity to be able to get into these positions. Right. Well, I, you know, oh, I don't. I like interrupting Sorry. Sophia, but I don't want to interrupt her mother. <laughs> or in this case, Emma. Oh, Emma. Uh, <laughs> Sophia, you know, when you're on stage, have you just thought about, you know, just <clears throat> doing your eyebrows a little bit? I, mean, I think that that way, when you arch your eyebrow at him, it'll it'll just it'll just set him off. You think it would just set him off if I was to arch my eyebrow? Well, of course, he'll, he'll lose his I mind and arch. he'll look foolish on stage. It, it totally works. Watch. So, and see, that's why you should be focusing on things like that. But I don't see that. I, I see feminism focusing on things that are that are uh, grasping at straws, right? When I when I see these articles on mansplaining and the interruption rate or whatever, I mean, these are not the serious issues that are facing women in in other countries and uh, you know, in less fortunate parts of the world. It, it, these are made up things by, by bitter women who are disappointed in in their personal relationships. But just even this conversation that we're having now, like you've interrupted me a ton of times, right? This 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 happens constantly to women. We have men claiming, you know, ideas and rights for. But it's not our fault if you are I, not. You confident. just did again. You just interrupted me again. Like you 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 do it even without thinking. That's how ingrained these different things are. In yeah. Our, in our you society, how we Sophia. act, that we have to. Actually, that's kind of just how debate works. <sighs> I mean, we can we can clearly see that Sophia is here. Has not put a lot of effort into coming and debating in front of all of you. What do you mean by that? What What are you talking about? Well, I just mean that if women were interested in being taken seriously as professionals, then they should be leaning into that and taking those opportunities. I put some effort into, you know, my appearance and I, you know, I have to shave every day and, uh, you know, and, and keep my hair groomed. And, you know, I just see from a lot of feminists, quite honestly, you know, just that sense of entitlement that they should just get things that they, you know, haven't put the effort in to get. I can guarantee you that I put more time and effort into my appearance today than you did. I... I think you have no conception of how much time women every day have to put into their appearance and their okay. well, general way of looking. Free Hakan from this hell. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, I didn't want to interrupt, but I was going to say that Hakan I, or whoever's like Sophie, uh, I think you. it's fair for you to tap out as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I think the taps can go either way. <laughs> Sorry to tap sooner. I felt like oh, ah, fine. appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, I see I see these meaningless, really honestly just petty articles cross my Facebook feed from time to time from these so-called feminist news outlets. And I, you know, I think we're all exhausted, right? We're all tired of seeing that kind of thing. Who's this we you're speaking of? I think that you're looking at it from a point of view that is narrow and you're not thinking about it. More broadly, I, I think is a good way to, to frame this. What is your broad interpretation? Well, I'm, I would say that feminism is intersectional, so it's not just the needs of poor women, but it's the needs of all women and, and people who identify as women. And the idea is that we are looking, working on women. multiple levels. Right, Sophia, so Sophia. intersectional. <laughs> Sophia, don't, can't you see, like, you're, all that lipstick you're wearing, that's just what he wants you to be doing. You're just there to... God, Mom. For all the men who would be watching, or...? It's not about men. It's about me. And if I want to wear makeup, it's to please me. It's... 
it's not just about, it's not about what men think is going on with my face. I chose this color because I think that, you know, honestly, it looks really good on me and it makes my teeth look white. Which so I like. Been- but has any of the men have has the man on stage put in that level of effort into his appearance? Isn't this just further solidifying the fact that we have to work harder in order to be presentable, in order to be accepted by society? I'm, but mom, if things have evolved. It's such that I'm choosing to present myself in a way that makes myself comfortable and. And part of it is wearing lipstick occasionally. And I I think that it's something that's, it's not that it's totally outside of the the entire conversation of feminism, but I think that it's it's a meaningful choice for me to make. And so that's why we keep hearing these uh, buzzwords like intersectionality. They have to invent a whole language to come up with these uh, these delusional ideas about what is happening. Uh, it's a matter of just taking subjectivity to the extreme. There's no, there's no. Object- I cannot help but disagree with you, Henry. It, it's not taking anything to the extreme, but instead, it's uncovering that there's a lot more knowledge that out there and a lot more perspectives than you would perhaps acknowledge. And sure, I think sure. so I, I have to incorporate the, uh, the perspectives of just anyone. I have to just assume that everyone is, is an expert. I think it would help if you didn't assume that you were the only expert. Don't take that from him like that. He's being incredibly rude to you. He's cutting you off. He's just laying into you like that. Treat him the same way, fight him back. Oh. It doesn't come naturally to me, Mom. I, I being able to just kind of attack him, uh, I don't, I just, it's not that I can't, it's just that it's something that I'm really uncomfortable with. I, I've got to, I've got to handle this debate my way. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I respect a lot what, of what you said, Mom, and and your support means a lot to me. And I, I, I'm grateful that you know, you forged the the way so that I could wear lipstick now, and I'm not forced to. But instead, it's something that I could choose to do. And finally, that's why all of the relevant feminist issues were resolved, at least in this country, decades ago. What people are holding on, what feminists are holding on to now is the desire to control the discourse in this country. I can't help but disagree. The, Again, but you can't, we, help, can't help but disagree. Well, that's because your argument is fallacious. And that's because you're connected, you're reliant on a way of looking at the world that's completely untenable. Well, so if, I think there's a big assumption that you're making about who is a feminist and what what it means. It's tap tap tap. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> also, apologize. We had a little uh, video hiccup there. Everything still looked fine, but the, the images okay. shrunk for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And look, the, the fight is far from over, right? Until all of these, until women have equal representation fight. in, yeah, fight. What, what do you want me to say? The, things aren't getting better just accepting the status quo. They're, the movement that's happened in the last number of decades is not sufficient to have women be taken seriously for their ideas and as something that's not tied to their- If they're not being taken seriously books. for their ideals, then maybe it's their ideals that need re-examining. You think that women in the entire world just have worse yeah. ideas and ideals than men do? Is that I'm the, saying the that feminism is the cause. All all this frustration that you are experiencing, this is this is this this mindset that young women are getting into because of because of this indoctrination into feminism it gives them the wrong idea about how the world works, and when they run into that, they just don't know what to do with it. I, I see it all the time. 
the uh, announcer has spoken that we have just one more minute uh, for to answer this question, and we will turn the table to uh, Sophia to for her final response. Um, Sophia, look, it, you can it, do this. I, I I totally believe in you. I'm trying, but it's it's just frustrating. He just keeps berating me and and digging into me over and over again. This isn't how I like to debate. This isn't how I like to to exchange ideas with someone. It, he's not even receptive to anything that I'm saying. It's it's okay. Just hang in there. And you know what? I think that if you you know how you you had that idea, I think now it's time to hit him with it. Okay, look, the, the way in which feminism has a lot of strides to still do, uh, to still go forward in this country is really amongst representation, what we're showing to our young girls. We need to be able to tell them that they can be anything that they want, and we need to be able to do that with role models and examples, not only through actual people, but through media and representation, right? When you have the vast majority of movies coming out not even having women talking to each other throughout the movie and only talking about men, that gives you a very distinct view of what women are seen as being for by popular culture and by media. And it has a real effect on girls and young women and the, the vision that they end up seeing for themselves for the future. And that's just the state of the world, Henry. And I'm sorry, we're time's up. You cannot respond, Henry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I. Um, uh, there, there was, there was uh, we, we, we did not actually. There's, there's a timer on that game because there's only so much <laughs> that anyone can or should have to endure, and uh, we, 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 we we realized that we hadn't set the timer, so I put that in artificially uh, to, to well, in artificially. I, I decided to add the timer in at some point. I don't think I got exactly 10 minutes. This is supposed to be just 10 minutes of this very <laughs> difficultness, and um, and I am I am biased and didn't want Henry to have the last word, so. Good. <laughs> Good instinct. Yeah, we, we actually, we so we did very little pre-planning for any of these games, yeah. except we had to plan who was going to play Henry, because the moment there I was, was, I was like, you can't do, I'm not going to be yeah. Henry in this game. Uh, Alex, you're an absolute, yes. uh, you're Alex absolute is the champ. champ for playing the role, these these challenging roles. I did. I should. We shouldn't have asked you to play Cloud. Actually, uh, I was thinking about that too. I was like, this reflects so poorly on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's uh, very easy for me because these are all things that I've heard um, in discussions with various men from a very young age. So I got lots, 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 lots to draw on. I'm sorry that that's true. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, uh, so we're free. Yeah, yeah. We're out of the frame. We're we're <laughs> we're, we're all four of us are up on on screen now, um, and uh, no one's playing any characters again. We're back. That's right. <laughs> um, now I'm responsible for what I say. Uh, so the game is over. Uh, we can take a few minutes to discuss whether Sophia ended up wearing lipstick or not. And now I really wish that I had attacked Sophia for her choices more because I feel like I really didn't take that angle enough. <laughs> I think you were attacking her plenty, plenty hard. Yeah. But I see, I see the making the distinction about about uh, the lipstick. But yeah. mm. what do you think, Laura? You, oh, uh, it's tough. It's um, I don't know. She she might be a little bit more confident not. I think you had a really nice exchange with her mother about it too, though. She did, yeah. It, it was very much like putting to rest, like that worry about her her mother's disapproval. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the fact that whether or not she chooses to, it sounds to me like will be more influenced by her, like by her relationship with those other two women than it is by anything that Henry would say. That that's very satisfying to me. Yeah. 
Um, Sean, what do you think? Uh, are you saying Hakan or Sean? Oh, I thought it's Sean. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that, that conversation. I know, I know, uh, Henry, I know as, as Henry, Alex, your job was to just, just attack and, and berate, uh, Sophia, but I appreciated that you backed off for a moment to let her have the conversation with her mother, uh, <laughs> because it seemed like it, um, uh, really gave her a chance to, to express and, and to suss out the reasons why she was going she was going to wear them. So I, I feel like uh, if Sophia did wear lipstick, and I and I think I think she might have, uh, she would have gone on knowing that her mother would still be watching the show and would still have her back, and wouldn't at the end of it be like, well, the reason why you lost was because you didn't take <laughs> it seriously, you know, or the reason why he was such a jerk is because you were wearing lipstick. Like I feel like uh, that she would they would have established she would have supported her no matter what, which I was. Which I was really happy about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the other thing to discuss is um, uh, we can each say the best or worst moment moment that we had, or both, um, and then we can talk about any insights that came up while we were playing. The worst was just getting interrupted by Henry all the time. <laughs> That's really easy. Um, the uh, yeah, and it's it just there is the overwhelming feeling of like no matter what I know or what I want to say, like this person has adopted such an inconsistent worldview with like what I what I know to be true, what I what I see as the world that I don't know how we're going to make. Like, I don't know where this debate is supposed to go, um, was kind of like the, the suckiest part for me. Um, and the best part for me, I think, was getting the last word, probably. Like, that was, that was really nice. Um, getting reassured by, uh, by Emma, that uh, was also really nice. Those were, those were my good parts. <laughs> Um, my favorite moment was interrupting Hakan the first time, and <laughs> the worst time was interrupting him like the seventh time. <laughs> it stops being fun really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, um, what about you? Uh, I think that uh, the best part, I think, was talking to my mom. That was, I was like, oh, this is so nice. Um, uh, Queens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, the worst part. I'm really not a debater. I'm really not good at that. So uh, it, it, it was really hard to come up with like good arguments or arguments that sound like sounded good. Um, yeah. And I had some trouble playing Emma because I was just like, what, what would I say? I don't really <laughs> know much about this person. <laughs> so it was hard to get into it and like be that friend who's like yeah i'm gonna say hi to um adam's oh viewers thanks adam for, for hosting us uh we're all we just wrapped up a game of uh, lipstick which is a hashtag feminism nano game and uh you've got us in a very vulnerable moment as we're debriefing <laughs> our experience with uh a game about a woman and her own doubts about debating uh, an MRA activist dude, and it was it was rough. Um, I I so I was watching this whole thing and just trying to do keep the screens swapped as needed, and <laughs> and, uh, and later watching the time. And uh, for me, the worst part was the very first scene with Hakan, where but like Hakan was just like. I don't know what to say. And Laura was like, I'm not ready to jump in. And and, and Alex, you were just like, ah, I'm just keep tearing into you. And I was like, somebody do something. And, I, and I, I didn't have a voice. I didn't have a way to say anything. And I was like, I wanted to say, Laura, jump in. But I could also see Laura being like, I don't want to jump into this. I just, I felt so, I was like, it was so weird to be silenced in that moment of being like, I, I can't do anything i can't stop this monster 
Uh, and my best part for me was I was hovering my mouse over the mute button for you, Alex, where if you had tried to respond, I was just going to be like, mute, uh, <laughs> at the very end, because I was going to give uh, Sophia the last, the last word, no matter what. I didn't want to mute you if I didn't have to, but I was like, or just ready. I, like, I, I have this power. I don't have the power to talk, but I have the power to talk. And you would have been right to use. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, that, I'm surprised now looking at it that that game doesn't have a, a debrief, an explicit debrief. Yeah. Oh, it, it does. It, uh, it does? It, it's Did not miss- called out as a debrief, but it says in the setup section, and the timer rings, the game ends, oh, yeah. it takes a few minutes, and... Got yeah, it. It's okay. structured. Good, um, good, good. So it, it, is, it is part of the game to talk about it. Um... Uh, you know, something that um, I think is pretty subtle in the game that uh, that I'm kind of just realizing now is that it's, like, regardless of how, like, Henry perceives her and how that plays out, I think a lot of this is just about, like, the freaking cognitive load of makeup. Like, never mind, like, the expense of it and, like, the the expertise that is required, you know, it's, like, the skill and, like, labor, but there's also just the, like, Am I wearing too much makeup? Am I not wearing enough? Is my makeup melting off my face right now? <laughs> like, is this too much makeup for this occasion? Okay, but I'm going to work, but then I'm going out. Like, it, like mm-hmm. just the fact that it has to take up that much room in your brain. Yeah, Since and every little additional thing that you have to keep track of over the course of your day really adds up to a lot. Yeah. Mm. Totally. Yeah, I was just reading a, a great article on uh, mental labor and... Um, and I, I feel like that would be a great, uh, a great, another point to add to that of how much, uh, just mental energy, um, is spent to, to factor in, uh, makeup and all of those details. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause there was a huge disparity. I liked it when you're like, I shaved and I, uh, and you know, I did everything to look presentable. And as a guy, I'm like, yeah, sure. I can do all those things in like no time in my sleep um <laughs> you know president barack obama had i mean i love the man but he had one suit he wore every single day he had a zillion copies of him he had zero choices he ever made about his about the attire he was going to wear. except that one time, right? <laughs> the, one time. the tan suits yeah the one time before the tan suit and we all lost our freaking minds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, Al- Adam said, uh, one interesting thing was I couldn't even keep up with the points Henry was making, maybe because I was mentally distracted by how frustrating he was. Uh, <laughs> well, think, that's good. I think there's a point to the, the idea that like Henry very quickly just sounded like noise, but, but a, a blind, a deafening noise. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't, oh, you're just talking nonsense. It was, you're just overwhelming with, uh, Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think um, if, if we're up for it, I think we have the time. Uh, we could take our break and then uh, and then try 6016. Or if we are like exhausted by going through these exercises, we can also give a final plug to feminism and Bag Bay Rad Con and uh, and give ourselves a and uh, give ourselves a break because we've just uh, endured a lot. So, <laughs> what do you folks feel up for? Yeah, where's the energy level? Um. I think I have energy for one more. Okay. Um, how do you feel? Yeah. Okay. I, I think awesome. It. All right, everybody. We're going to take a break. I'm going to make another overlay because I didn't think we'd been through these so quickly. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll be back in a few to play some more uh, hashtag feminism nano games. Which are- That's right. We'll be back. <laughs> awesome. right. Oh, I have to do a thing to make us be back. Hold on. I will do the oh. thing. Okay. We're, not, we're not gone yet. We will oh, be back. This is awkward. And- oh, no. <laughs>